I came dressed for the occasion. I have my constitutional tie on today with We the People, and it's red, uh, showing that we have a lot of red ink right now. Uh, I'm Dave Walker, and just a few comments. I'm one of the three co-chairs of this uh, study. You know, America truly is a great nation. We've gone from a fledgling republic to a global superpower. Uh, we've got a lot to be proud of and a lot to be thankful for. At the same point in time, candidly, we've strayed from a lot of the principles and values that made this country great. In addition to that, we face a number of key sustainability challenges that threaten our future, fiscal challenges, healthcare challenges, education, energy, just to name a few. This study attempted to engage in a strategic, comprehensive, and integrated assessment of where the United States stands, what its position is in the world, because we all know that we are currently in a global recession. We have a number of unprecedented non-business cycle challenges that we have to deal with, and understandably, the administration needs to focus on turning the economy around and dealing with these, tra with these uh, challenges. At the same time, we never seem to have time to deal with the strategic and structural challenges that face us that, quite frankly, get worse with the passage of time, those key sustainability challenges that we face. I think it's important to keep in mind that while this report addresses a number of different issues, it only makes four recommendations at the top. And I'm going to touch on three of these four because my colleagues, I'm sure, will touch on those and, and the fourth for sure, which is education. First, the need for a comprehensive and integrated strategic assessment and to develop a, nat a national strategy for the next 10 years. Believe it or not, since 1789, the United States has never had such a comprehensive, integrated, written strategy. Never has. We need to be future focused. We need to be results oriented. If you, have a, if you don't have a plan, you're going nowhere fast and we need a plan. Secondly, the need for a fiscal future commission to be able to address our deteriorating financial condition, our escalating deficits and debt, the fact that more and more the budget is on autopilot, the fact that we're increasingly relying on foreign lenders, and now those foreign lenders are saying publicly that they are concerned about our long-term creditworthiness and they are concerned about the dollar. If we don't pay attention to that, we are truly asleep. Uh, it is important that you listen to your bankers. Uh, and frankly, America is now being mortgaged, and increasingly that mortgage is being held by foreign lenders. And thirdly, health care. Health care truly is our largest fiscal challenge at the federal level, at the state level. It's our tr largest competitiveness challenge. We've got to do something about health care. We need to reduce the rate of increase in cost. We need to make a significant down payment on the tens of trillions of dollars of unfunded obligations we already have. And yes, we need comprehensive health care reform that addresses coverage, cost, quality, and personal responsibility. But in the end, comprehensive health care reform needs to result in a positive impact on our fiscal bottom line, not a negative. Because if there's one thing that could bankrupt America, it's health care. And that's where we're headed right now, absent a course correction. I want to end with three quotes from three of our founding fathers, because I think they are very prophetic. prophetic. Alexander Hamilton, a national debt, if not excessive, will be a national blessing. He was right then, he's right now. To fight and win our independence and to assume all state debts this country had debt as a percentage of GDP of 40%. We will be at 100% by the end of next year. Secondly, we should avoid ungenerously throwing upon posterity the burden that we ourselves ought to bear. George Washington, we should heed these timeless words of wisdom. And thirdly, think of your forefathers. Think of your posterity, John Adams. Put me down as a yes 
for saving America's future. Thank you very much. Governor Romer. The uniqueness of this is the comprehensive approach. One of the ten areas of recommendation is education. And this is one that is unfolding as we stand here today. It's obvious that whatever we do to put this nation back on the right track, we have got to increase our skills, our knowledge, and we've got to be more competitive in the world. A simple fact, if you compare the United States 15-year-olds with 30 key nations in the world, we're 25th from the top. Now, how do we get there? Four things. We need to raise national standards. We need to have more rigorous curriculum aligned to those standards. We need to have more authentic tests that help us improve teaching in addition to holding people accountable. And fourth, we've got to have better teaching. This recommendation says we need to have a the president or Congress or someone to convene the 50 states governors and chief school officers to agree within the next year to a common set of educational standards. We now have 50 different standards. The politics of America probably dictate that that convening will not be done by anybody federal, but will be done by the states themselves and the chief state school officers, because that's the beginning of effective reform in education. You have to have, in the politics of America, buy-in by these 50 states. I predict this will happen. It'll happen because the stimulus bill sets the framework for it. You well know, we are spending money in the right way, and there is five billion of that set aside for, quote, race to the top. And I believe the Secretary of Education is committed, he said this publicly, to use those funds over the next two years to use appropriate incentives to the states to accomplish a common set of standards, authentic tests that are matched to those standards. And then it will follow that uh, the rest of the educational infrastructure will fill in the curriculum and, and teaching we got, a, again, a joint project. So let me summarize. This is one of the 10 key items in this report. In the long run, it may be the most fundamental because you can't move on health care, on military, on any other, unless you increase the capacity, the skill levels, and the knowledge of this nation. Secondly, it's very optimistic, because the political forces unfolding are actually implementing this recommendation. Again, it's a recommendation that brings together the 50 states that consensually will say, all of us, or at least a substantial portion, will agree within 12 months to a common set of standards. And they will be benchmarked against the best in the world, and that's a very key issue. Secondly, we will agree to arrive at more authentic testing. And I think all of you know we are dependent a lot upon the bubble test now. We need to have tests that actually enable somebody to demonstrate a full understanding of their knowledge and their skill. That as you well know, people teach to the test. If you get the quality test, they're going to radically improve the quality of teaching. So you start with standards, you go to curriculum, you embed the tests, and you do the most important thing, which is improve the quality of teaching. That is a proposal outlined here. It's a proposal that this president and the current secretary of education have publicly committed to follow its direction in general terms, and we'll see specifics soon. That's optimistic. Thank you very much.